but this does tend to feel a little bit uh, weary on the wrists after a time but aside from that I really like the fact that it is not as high as the iPad if I were to hold my iPad uh, in um, portrait mode like this you would immediately see the difference that I do can I can get my thumbs across but not uh, when I am holding it as I would hold the Motorola Zoom in portrait mode. So if I hold it right here, nice and sturdy, I cannot uh, touch the entire keyboard that I have in the landscape mode. No, I'll just try to call up that keyboard. It's kind of hard. You can just barely reach the center keys. When I do the same thing with the Motorola Zoom, which has a smaller keyboard as you can see it is much more convenient to do so as you can see my thumbs overlap and this makes typing like this a lot easier than on the iPad so I do really like that about the Motorola Zoom if we take a look at the back sides Motorola Zoom uh, the most striking feature is that both the power button here and uh, the camera uh, here are on the back side so there's also a flash there's an external speaker the battery goes here uh, hardware wise you have your headphone jack up at the top here you have your second camera at the back and you here have your space to plop the, your, down your SD card and also your 4G SIM card. The 3G SIM card of the Motorola Zoom is on the main board. Uh, the 4G SIM card slides in uh, here. Uh, here at the back you have a few more connections. This uh, copper connection probably will be there for the uh, dock where you can put it into and then you have a micro USB and this looks like a mini USB connector that you can use. So all in all sturdy hardware, heavy hardware but a decent tablet. Next up we're going to take a look at the hardware specs, the price and we are going to give you a little bit of a final comment on what we think of the Motorola Zoom. The hardest part with doing tablet reviews like these is the fact that you need to get in a room that is dark enough so you can really uh, stop all the reflections on the screen. Uh, the glass of the uh, Motorola Zoom is quite reflective so outside you will have glare problems. Uh, the iPad's bad, the Motorola Zoom is not worse but not really better. But that's not really what we're going to talk about in this part. We are going to take a look at the Android 301 operating system that is on here. Unlock mechanism is beautiful. You have this little circle that you need to drag to the lock over here. But if you move it around, you can just see plenty of reflections around. So we're just going to unlock the device and be presented with a standard screen. Motorola gives it a nice Tron-like widget Oops, that you can, if you want to, move around and you have some icons here at the bottom. We'll take a closer look at the screen in the top right you have the ability to add widgets and stuff like that and of course a ability to take a look at all of your apps and here at the bottom you have your back button, your home button and your button to switch between open applications and here at the top if you can see it just barely you have your Google search bar. Uh, there are some standard icons on the bottom to books, the marketplace and stuff like that. Now when you actually um, start up the Motorola Zoom for the first time it does want to activate on the Verizon network. Since we're in Europe that's not really going to work um, but I just hooked it up via Wi-Fi. I haven't configured this model uh, to my personal settings just yet. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of what the uh, interface looks like. 
Uh, you can switch from desktop to desktop. Uh, it uh, does have a little animation. You can see a blue frame around here. I don't know if it's visible on the camera. And that allows you to switch between the different desktops. Um, adding widgets to those desktops is pretty easy. Just hold down your thumb and you're presented with this brand new widget menu that lets you choose between widgets, shortcuts, wallpapers, and more. You can even put some bookmarks, contacts, stuff like that on there. Now the more is pretty strange, but what this, what this does allow you to do is actually take a shortcut and drag it to the desktop that you want it to be on. Now it will um, ask me what uh, shortcut I want to put on there because I dragged the uh, setting shortcut over there. So I'll just take battery use and you can see that it's up here in the top. So if I tap that setting, I can immediately go to the battery use menu. Now I'm going to go back to the home folder here so I can show you uh, some more. We were looking at the widgets. So as for widgets, there are several widgets. You have this nice Tron-like clock. You have your bookmarks, uh, Gmail, stuff like that. And it all scales up pretty nicely um, to what you want to uh, do on the screen. The high resolution of this screen, 1200 by, 80 by 800 pixels, does make for a great interface to work with. Um, you have some app shortcuts that you can drag around. Let's, for example, drag around the mail. And this is nice. You really have an oversight of which application is on which virtual desktop. And you can change the wallpapers if you want to. You have some standard wallpapers. You also have some animated wallpapers that you can use. We'll go for this one. Now, whenever I will I'll set this wallpaper as a wallpaper, go back to the home screen. And whenever I will switch the screen, the animation goes with it. It's not really triggered by the microphone, I think, but it does react to movement and sound. Pretty cool wallpaper if you uh, if you take a look at that. Now, um, adding more widgets is, is very easy. You just uh, hold down your finger and it will automatically take you back to the widgets and settings menu. I'm going to go for a wallpaper that's a little bit less unnerving. Just go for standard wallpaper that moves a little bit. That's more than good enough. I'm going to set that as our wallpaper background and go back. Now, uh, we are going to take a look at some applications here. So I'll go to the apps menu up top and we will have an overview of all the applications on the device. As you can see, you've got your books, calculator, uh, clock, Gmail. These are just the standard applications that come with it. Now there are already a few higher resolution applications in the Android store, but not much as yet. Most of them scale up nicely, so that's good. Um, the default uh, Gmail app on here is pretty pretty uh, sleek. I haven't configured it as yet, so it will ask me to do so. But this will give you a nice look at what the keyboard looks like. So I'll just you can see uh, it's a keyboard that's nice and wide with plenty of um, plenty of key uh, keys on there that give you enough thumb space to punch them down. So it is a little bit on the wide side, but uh, the form factor is not really important in this part of the review. Now, if you go to um, portrait mode, let me see if it switches automatically. It should. Let me see if we can uh, search that back into the settings menu. Just go to the home menu. There you go. Now, if I would were to call up the keyboard here, let's see if we can do that. Uh, the setup of Gmail doesn't allow me to use the keyboard in portrait mode, but the browser will. It's, of course, complaining it's not really connected right now. But if I fire up the keyboard, you can just see. Now, the magic of the form factor here and of the keyboard is this. Look at my thumbs. My thumbs intercross. That's mean, that means I can really and swiftly and fastly type. This is something that's not on the iPad, because on the iPad they barely reach each other because the form factor is different. Here on that Android keyboard, this actually makes for quite, uh, quite fast typing if you uh, get the hang of it. If you move it again to portrait mode, you have the big keyboard, but it is harder to type on. Now, if you have multiple applications open, you can just press the application button and choose between 
the different applications that you have open at the, mo at the moment. For example, we were taking a look at the brightness a little bit later on. Now we are going to do, go to the Google setup again and we are going to switch back to the browser. Now if you just want to go back, that's the back button. If you want to go to the home menu where we are at the moment, you just hit the home button. So it's all in all not spectacularly different than um, uh, Android on your phone and then again it is. So it's a, a very nice looking interface. It runs pretty smoothly on um, on this processor of course and that's a good thing because uh, it is pretty energy intensive. Battery wise you should get there but as you can see I've just charged it up and the battery is quite good. So that's a overview, just an, a, a, a big overview of what um, Android 3.0, uh, 3.01 looks like on the Motorola Zoom and uh, all in all it's a pretty nice experience. If I have to round up on how I, f how I think that this feels uh, while working with it, well on the device it feels very smooth, there are not a lot of hiccups, it is still a little buggy, sometimes applications crash, sometimes things don't really work right out of the box from the first time, you sometimes have to double click an application to get it working. But the marriage between the software and the hardware in this device is fairly good. I mean, you have a great experience browsing through content. I've uh, reviewed the 1.6 Android devices that are pretty cheap uh, a while ago, the A-Robot A-Pad. But this one is, uh, that was also an Android phone, but this one is significantly different. So the look and the feel of 301 versus 203 uh, of the Android operating system is well. Because there are not a lot of apps available and because I haven't had the time to exclusive, to, to really deep dive into what is possible, it is of course um, only, I only have a limited view of, uh, of what the thing can do. And there's always the factor that, you know, you have Android and then you have the skin that the provider puts on top of it. So in this case, this is a Motorola skin that's on top of that and there's a Verizon skin on top of that. But all in all, it holds up pretty nice. I like the three buttons at the at the bottom here that let you browse through several applications quite easily and it is really fast to go from app to app. There is no longer a a menu bar that you have to drag down that's not that's no longer there you very simply have the app button here to go to all of your applications and there's also the plus button if you want to add your widgets so it's very sleek it's not very um it's not very complicated it's very simple and I like the simplicity of the design. I like to to uh, find easy uh, to find it easy to really go from desktop to desktop, from app to app. And by just sliding from left to right for desktop to desktop, and using this button to to switch between your your different applications, it does give you a very nice way to interact with the device in portrait mode. So that was the uh, well umbrella view or the helicopter view, as we say for Android 301. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our little review of the Motorola Zoom. I want to thank the people at PHC for giving it on a loaner and I hope that we will have uh, some other devices to uh, perhaps to tinker and review a little bit later on, but who knows. It was very nice to play with the device. Am I pleased with the device? Would I buy it? I still think it's early days. It is still early days. This is still a very new device. You can feel it. You can feel it in the operating system. It isn't 100% yet, but it does sport ex very good uh, possibilities. It does have the potential to be really, really big. I don't know if I'm spoiled by the iPad or I'm just spoiled because I haven't seen anything else than iOS on tablets so far. But this is, well, kind of the first, inter uh, the first encounter that I had with uh, Gingerbread. What I must say is that if this device is in an affordable price range, and I when I say affordable, I mean five to six hundred euros cheaper than the iPad, 
then I would seriously consider it. I love the Android freedom the device gives me. I love the fact that you can drag movies onto it. I love the device that you can tie all kinds of Google services into it. I love the fact that it doesn't need iTunes and a stinking cable to get just one single song on it. So in that uh, perspective, I'm very, very, very uh, curious about what